My name is Nadal Al Salman. I work for Bahrain Center for Human Rights. I uh, work uh, with the Bahrain Center, which is uh, the oldest Bahraini organization, uh, NGO in Bahrain. Um, it is mainly uh, for the violation, uh, to document the violation which is happening to Bahrain. Um, and we document this violation and we report it to the concerned um, uh, bodies. Uh, the situation today, seriously, the situation today is much worse than how it was two years ago. Uh, but um, we are really facing a blackout where nobody is covering Bahrain. As a, a journalist, they're not allowed to come to Bahrain. Uh, journalists, uh, cannot, uh, they are denied coming to Bahrain because uh, uh, of uh, the government doesn't allow them to come to Bahrain uh, due to trying to hide the reality of uh, the situation, how bad is the situation. I mean, even um, Formula One, which is happening this month, all who took uh, permission to come to Bahrain had to sign, We will. Ha they will have to sign upon arrival that they will only be covering um, sports uh, events. We try to take advantage of as well of the Formula One because last year some of the um, journalists which attended Bahrain, we tried to show them the reality by going to the villages because um, it's like Bahrain is like divided. You go to an area and you see the way um, Bahrain is very developed. Bahrain is, a, I mean, like um, has everything but when you go to the villages and you see you cannot believe it, that you are in the same country uh, so we took advantage even from the formula one uh, by allowing some of the journalists to attend by showing them what is happening in bahrain and i still believe that this year we'll try to do the same as well For us, I mean, if we didn't have the social media, if we didn't have the social media, we wouldn't have been able even to deliver any what's happening in Bahrain. I mean, social media played a very good, um, I mean, tool. And it was very important for us. Otherwise, I mean, um, we managed uh, even in protest, I mean, to to confirmed the violation the camera was uh on mobiles and everything and we, we we were tweeting what's happening and this is how it was delivered to the world and uh, nowadays i think social media is uh, really playing um a very good important it's it became a tool as well as an enemy for the government by the way Um, I have to say something about Bahrain. Bahrain, uh, there was never a uh, difference between uh, Shias and Sunni. There is marriages. As uh, you know, our president Bahrain uh, for Bahrain Center for uh, Nabi Rajab, his three sisters is married to a Sunni. And there was never, never um, division. Uh, div uh, they were never divided. Friends, something has happened i mean it was a game which was played only in the past let's say they started maybe seven or eight years ago till it's uh, spread around the area and they are trying to divide us divide the people so that they can um control the country that's i think this is a, a very very dangerous game and i wish that everybody wake up and try to think that these dictators are using them as a tool uh, to uh, reach what they want and uh, then they are nothing, not because of their sector, not because of anything, it's because of the loyalty. As you see, either which sector you are, if you're loyal to the um, dictators, you will be uh, his, uh, his right hand. If you're not loyal, you will be his enemy. Um, in Bahrain, the majority of Bahrainis, they are Shias, and the ruling families is Sunni, but we lived together for a long time, I mean, but what made sense, the 1956, this was the first a protest would happen to in Bahrain when uh, some of the people rejected that um, uh, the British uh, should be shouldn't be in control of Bahrain. This was the first protest, 
um, with the same demand that it, the people of Bahrain should be in charge and they should be treated equally and you should be getting, um, I mean, the position and the ministry should be, you should get this position because of uh, your um, ability to do so, not because of your loyalty to the rulers. And that's how it started since the 56th, continued. 65 again, there was another protest, which we, we lost, I think, seven of um, uh, who was shot dead in that year. And it continued over years and years till it exploded now. So our protest is not something new. It was it was since long time. It was because the rejection of the corruption, the rejection of uh, the rule of one family, the rejection of the discrimination against the Shias uh, in villages like Shias villages. If you go, you see the poverty in the villages. You see how they are living. And when you go to other areas, you see the facilities which they are offering. That was um, the main issue which made, um, uh, which fueled the people and made it, them ask for a change. I cannot see anybody who is in need and I can, uh, without helping him. I cannot see the discrimination which is happening in Bahrain and I keep quiet. I cannot see anybody who's calling me for help and I keep quiet. The, what is how, what uh, made me decide enter this after what happened in 2011 and after what, um, I mean, when uh, people were divided into different uh, sects, different villages like areas which is uh, you cannot enter this area and areas and I cannot um, I felt like I'm a foreigner in my own country and when I see somebody and when I pass by somebody and I see the way they and the checkpoint the way they um, uh, it depends on um, this is something which you have to know and Bahrain it depends on what car you are driving uh, if they which village you are from if they saw you are in a small car you will be stopped in the checkpoints and they will ask you if they decide so that your ID is because you are in uh, uh, one of the villages, they will stop you and um, uh, do investigation with you in the checkpoints. Um, I cannot see this because I believe that everybody, as we are, we should be equally um, we should be treated equally it's not so i couldn't uh, be quiet i decided to enter this yeah. also seeing lots of children behind bars and uh, um, tortured and some of them really bad torture uh, as young as nine years uh, i thought i have to speak and i have to try to help I was never been prosecuted. I was never been um, interrogated. Um, I because mainly I deal with international advocacy. Uh, but with the situation nowadays, what I see, um, I, th I believe anything is expected uh, because I can see that all Bahrain Center for Human Rights is targeting one by one. We are left with a couple of people. I mean, we are like six people only left uh, from Bahrain Center who is li living in Bahrain, mostly either behind bars or we're forced to exile. So anything is expected. Anytime you can, something can, can happen. Um, I wish to be optimistic. I wish to be optimistic because this is my personality. I'm very optimistic person. I'm I'm a very a personality which I always think that the future will bring a better a better thing for us. But with what I see, what I see, the targeted, the targeting human rights defender, targeting uh, whoever. Uh, whoever say a word against the government, like for tweeting, uh, targeting uh, people, children, or trying to frighten the families uh, to silence them. What I see the, um, that the situation is getting worse. And especially when I see the area and I see the sectarian card, which is a, they are playing in this sectarian card to control the countries and to con these dictators using the sectarian cards. I don't see that it will be uh, ending soon. I think it will take a much longer time than when, what we expected. Mm -hmm.